Hey, it's Ryan Collector from Gun University. I'm a former special operations sniper, sniper instructor, and I'm the best-selling author of the Long Range Shooting Handbook. And I'm here to answer two questions for you. First, what is a mill? And second, how do we use it in long range shooting? Well, first, the term mill is actually just an abbreviation for milliradian. And to understand what a milliradian is, let's break the word down into its component parts. Milli is a prefix meaning one one thousandth. Think one millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter. So this right here means one one thousandth of a radian. <laughs> what the heck's a radian? Well, a radian is a mathematical concept figuring out the angle of a circle that you are never going to use again. But we're going to do it now so you understand what a mil radian is. So imagine a circle. The radius of a circle is the measurement from the center of a circle to the outside edge. Okay? A radian is the angle we calculate by taking that radius and wrapping it around the outside of the circle. So imagine I had a string that long, and I wrapped the string around the edge of the circle. Maybe it'd be about there, would be the resulting angle. That means that angle is a radian, one milli, one one thousandth of that, as we break it into a thousand little pieces. And so one little tiny part of that is one milliradian. This is used in shooting as one of two angular measurements, the other being min of the angle, which we cover in another video. But this angular measurement is useful because when we adjust our scope in our rifle, we're moving the barrel in angles up or down, left or right, and then after knowing the distance, we can figure out how much that angle translates to. Well, milliradian is pretty handy because what it means is the height, how big it is right here, is always going to be one one thousandth of the distance. Because imagine if we were that dot right there shooting. And let's say we were shooting 1,000 meters away. We were here, we're shooting a target out there. And I said that target was exactly one milliradian tall. How tall would the target be if I were to take a linear measurement of it with a measuring tape? It would be one meter, one one thousandth of that distance. That's really handy. Now, some people think because it's got a metric prefix that it only works with meters because it's metric. It's not true. One mil radian means one one thousandth of the distance regardless of what unit we're using. At a thousand yards, it would be one yard. At a thousand miles, it'd be one mile. At a thousand inches, it would be one inch. It just means one one thousandth. It's as big as one one thousandth of whatever that distance is. I hope you can start to see why this can be handy with shooting. Because if at a thousand meters, it's one meter tall, well, at half the distance, it would be half as big, right? At 500 meters, it'd be half a meter tall. At 100 meters, it would be a tenth of a meter tall. About that, that would be one milliradian at 100 meters. Well, that's not too handy for us, because that's a pretty big adjustment at 100 meters. So when we're dealing with a scope that adjusts in milliradians, they don't adjust in one complete mil, because you'd have to adjust that much. Instead, they adjust in tenths of mils. And if you're following along with the math and meters, you know that a tenth of a decimeter, of a tenth of a meter, is one centimeter. That's actually pretty handy. So we know that one tenth of a mil, that's my abbreviation for mils, at 100 meters equals one centimeter exactly. So how is that used in shooting? Let me show you. If I took two laser pointers and I spread them apart one tenth of a mil, those dots would spread further and further apart all the way to 100 meters and they would be exactly one centimeter apart. So if this right here, this angle, is one tenth of a mil and those are the laser dots traveling out at 100 meters, those dots, if I measured how far apart they were, they would be one centimeter. So now I have a question for you. What if I let those same dots travel all the way to 200 meters? It's the same one-tenth of a mil, but now they get to go all the way to 200 meters. How far apart are those dots? Well, they keep spreading apart at the same rate, which means at twice the distance, they're going to be twice as big. It'll be two centimeters apart. At 300 meters, it's three centimeters. 400 meters, it's four centimeters, and so on it's really handy as a conversion tool. So let's talk about two ways we use this in long range shooting. One way is to make an adjustment when we're shooting at distance. The trick here is, 
I want your brain to automatically start thinking in these one-tenth of a mil chunks whenever I give you a distance. That's going to be the key to understanding this. So if I say we're shooting at a 600 meter target, as soon as I let you know the target is 600 meters away, I want your brain to think, what is a tenth of a mil chunk? Six centimeters. I want you to start thinking in six centimeter chunks the moment you know it's a 600 meter target. That's if you're using mil radians. If you're using minutes, again, we covered that in the other video, but if you're using mil radians, start thinking in six centimeter chunks. If you're aiming here and you end up missing low, 12 centimeters low, how much do you need to adjust up in order to hit the target? Well, if you started thinking in six centimeter chunks, you ask yourself, how many six centimeter chunks fit within that distance? Well, two of them. Two six centimeter chunks fit there. There's one, there's the other. So we're gonna come up two tenths of a mil, shoot again, and we're gonna hit exactly where we want because you started thinking about that right away. Let's do another one to show you how this works. Let's go now to 300 meters. We're shooting at 300 meters, that 300 meter target, which means you immediately started thinking in tenth of a mil chunks. And you know that a tenth of a mil at 300 meters is three centimeters. So your brain's already thinking in three centimeter chunks. You were aiming here, you impacted here, it ends up being 15 centimeters low. What kind of an adjustment do you need to make in mil radians to get that bullet up to the target? Well, how many three centimeter chunks fit within that 15 centimeters? That's right, five, one, two, three, four, five. Therefore, we're gonna come up five tenths of a mil on our scope. We're gonna shoot again. We're gonna hit exactly where we want. I hope you see why this is helpful. The answer to how big is a mil radian in inches or centimeters or anything cannot be answered unless you know the distance. It's an angle. It's like me saying, hey, on a measuring tape, show me how big five degrees is. You can't. You gotta know how far of a distance we're going first, and then we can tell you what that adjustment's gonna be. It is super, super handy when you're making adjustments that way. Just imagine zeroing your rifle at 100 meters. If you're five centimeters low when you're zeroing, come up five tenths. If you're three centimeters right, come left three tenths, because you started thinking in one centimeter chunks at 100 meters. The other way we use it is when we're adjusting for targets at a known distance. You write down what we call your dope, your data on your previous engagements. That's the data for your rifle that you need to know to be able to engage a target at a certain distance. Your rifle, your cartridge, your scope, at a 600 meter target, you need to know how many mils to adjust each time to bring that barrel up to be able to engage the target. So what you end up doing is your scope is still looking straight at the target, but your barrel is underneath, is actually angled up. That's the orientation of your scope and your barrel. You can't see it, but it's there. Because we've now adjusted up to hit our 600 meters. Barrel goes up, scope keeps looking right at the target, the bullet comes out and travels, boom, hits the target, because we got the right angle. Now just because the bullet travels in an arc, which it does, and if this was flat ground, the bullet actually is getting further away from the ground, that does not mean the bullet rises when we shoot. That's a common misnomer. The bullet falls the moment it leaves the barrel. If there was a laser coming out of this barrel instead of a bullet, the laser would do that. The bullet actually falls further and further and further away from that as it travels. We're making that adjustment up for that distance. And it depends on your cartridge what that adjustment is going to be for your distance. Now, this is why I like a 100 yard or 100 meter zero, depending on which one you're shooting. Because if you zero at that distance, you will always adjust up when you're shooting at targets even closer than 100 meters. Now, when we did these videos about 10 years ago, I've seen many comments saying, closer than 100 meters, don't you mean you need to adjust down because it's gonna be too high? No. If you zero at 100 meters, you're using mil radians, you will adjust up regardless of the distance of the target if it's not exactly at 100. Let's do some visualization here. If here's your line of sight, which is a straight line out of your scope, okay, let's put the 100 meter target right there. Here's your barrel underneath your scope, very slightly angled up. That bullet is gonna travel out of that barrel and it's gonna meet at 100 yards and start falling, or 100 meters, sorry, and start falling away again. But it's gonna start out underneath the scope, which means if I put a target one meter right in front of you, right in front of your barrel, and you were aiming 
at a little sticker on that target. I got a question for you. Is your bullet going to hit the sticker? Is it going to miss high or is it going to miss low? What we can see right here, the bullet is going to miss low, which means if I'm hitting lower than where I'm aiming, what do I need to do in order to hit where I'm aiming? I need to aim high to get to it. Same thing if the target was here. We're looking here, the bullet is hitting down here. The bullet will hit low, even if you're shooting closer. This might be counterintuitive. This might also be an aha moment for some of y'all when you're shooting at something really close and you can't figure out what happened because you aimed low and you can't figure out why you missed it. Believe it or not, when something's close, you actually need to aim high. Now, I'll be honest, I don't think in centimeters. I think in inches. When I learned this a long time ago in the military, we were using minutes of angle for adjustment. I think in inches right away. So just to give you a, a, an average here, for my 308 at 25 yards, let's say that was 25 yards right there, my bullet is about an inch low from where I'm aiming. At 50 yards, it's about a half inch low, and then at 100 yards, 100 meters, about 10% off, it's right on. So if I zero there, I'm always adjusting up. I hope you now know what a mil radian is. You now know that mil is not short for military, it's short for milli. You know it's one one thousandth of whatever distance you're shooting, which means it's one centimeter, or sorry, it means one tenth of it is one centimeter at 100 meters. Now you know if you're shooting at distance to start thinking in tenths of a mil, you can get on target, you can zero your rifle, get out there and practice using it, it'll get easier with time.